Good afternoon. My name is Daniel Martin. I am a global regulatory leader for the oncology therapeutic, therapeutic area at Merck Healthcare KGAA. And I will share my experience with the process in the registration of an anti-cancer medicine during last year, 2021. I will go first through high level details of the innovative licensing and access pathway, and then the actual experience with ELAP. Next, please. The innovative licensing and access pathway is a new UK MHRA scheme implemented in January 2021, post-Brexit, which aims to accelerate time to market, facilitating patient access of innovative medicines and or medicines treating areas of unmet medical need. The ELAP enables multiple entry points depending on the stage of development of the product, the data available, the ambition of the applicant to engage with the stakeholders and appetite for new innovative ways of working. It provides um, opportunities for enhanced regulatory and other stakeholders input, such as the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, NICE, the Scottish Medicines Consortium, the National Health Service England, and providing companies with advice on clinical trial design to ensure optimal data generation for both regulatory approval and health technology appraisal. Next, please. Inclusion in the innovative licensing and access pathway enables setting up a target development profile. This is a roadmap defining key regulatory and development features. The inclusion in the ELAP also enables MHRA participation in project ORBIS, that's the Collaborative Marketing Authorization Review, which is led by the FDA, and on which um, relevant agencies that are participating are the Australian TGA, Health Canada, the UK MHRA, of course, Singapore, Swiss Medic, and the Brazilian visa. The innovation passport designation is a prior requirement and is acting as the gateway entry into the ELAP uh, pathway. Next, please. The innovation passport is the gateway, as I mentioned, to enter into, into the ELAP pathway. The eligibility requires meeting three criteria, and it is critical meeting all three of them. Criterion one is that the medicine is treating a life-threatening condition or a condition with significant admit uh, medical need. Criterion two has several uh, different points that can be met. Just one is required to, to, to meet criterion two. For instance, that the innovative uh, medicines that it is an innovative medicine, such as an advanced therapy or a new or bio, uh, chemical or biolog bio, biological entity, or a new um, drug device combination, or that um, it is a clinically relevant new indication, or that the medicine is um, treating a rare disease or a special population or that development is aligned to the objectives for public health priorities of the chief medical officer. So only just one of these needs to, to be met at least um, to, to meet the criterion number two. And then for criterion um, three, the match array is considering that the medicinal product has the potential to offer benefits to patients. Next, please. In order to progress the innovation passport, then a submission of an application for MHRA is uh, required. required. Um, the company is then invited to meet with MHRA to discuss how their product fulfills the three criteria. Following the meeting, the partners, MHRA, NICE, Scottish Medicines Consortium, jointly consider if the criteria have been met. The company is informed of the outcome within four weeks 
And after innovation passport designation, there is the option to progress the target development profile that defines key regulatory and development features and identify potential pitfalls, creating a roadmap for um, delivering early, um, early patient access. Next, please. With regard to the um, practical aspects of the ELAP pathway, um, I will cover four aspects. Um, an intro a, brief, a brief introduction, the MHR interaction, the aspects related to the marketing authorization application, and also those of the health technology um, appraisal, and finally a high level summary of the application, applications submitted to MHRA to, to date. Next, please. So the ELAP um, enables multiple entry points into the scheme, depending on the stage of development of the product, the data available, um, et cetera. In our case, we were in an advanced development stage, the marketing authorization application almost ready for filing in December 2020. So that was um, just about the scheme um, going into effect. Brexit timelines ruled the scheme initiation being 1st of January 2021. And obviously due to, to the legal reasons of UK being a member of the uh, European Union before the scheme could not um, come into effect earlier. Um, the ELAP guidance was made available in December 2020. That was very shortly before the scheme initiation. However, the match array was flexible and available to guide applicants within the extent of the information available. The ELAP allowed um, us for additional interactions with MHRA assessors and also gave us positive expectations for an improved health technology appraisal process. Next, please. In the context of the MHR interaction, the ELAP pathway enable um, additional interaction with the MHR assessors, uh, providing the opportunity for additional discussion, the identification of pitfalls and weak spots in the plant marketing authorization application. Also, it allows us a better understanding of the assessor's expectations on defined topics, and also um, provide uh, provided us with the opportunity to give additional clarification on quality, non-clinical, and clinical aspects of our innovative medicinal product, as well as an opportunity for the assessors to get preliminary familiarity with this new uh, product ahead of, of the filing. Next one, please. Um, with regard to the practical aspects of the marketing authorization application and the evaluation, the earlier interactions with the agency enabled us building a more robust application. The scheme opened the possibility of a rolling review, which um, in our case we did not use as our dossier was almost ready for filing. However, it's a, it's a positive feature um, for the pharmaceutical industry. It opened as well the possibility to participate in international collaborative assessment, such as the project Orbis, um, led by the FDA, as I mentioned before, as well as um, the uh, accelerated assessment of uh, the application with a 150-day proced procedure, which we used, and um, the time frame actually was met. Overall, we consider that the features of uh, introduced by ELAP for the marketing authorization application were very positive and they offer us very positive um, benefits actually. Next one, please. Um, with regard to our experience with health technology appraisal, um, the Scottish Medicines Con uh, Consortium has introduced additional process for ELAP designated, designated medicines, which provides an interim reimbursement. However, 
in England, the nice process seems unchanged. And in our uh, case, with no apparent benefits from, from being ELAP designated, especially taking into account the main objective of ELAP of facilitating patient access of innovative medicines and or medicines treating areas of unmet medical, medical need. So overall, um, the benefits from health technology process have been less significant than, tho than those on the marketing authorization of our evaluation in our experience. And next, please. And finally, to conclude my presentation, I would like to mention that during the first year in place, from January to end of December 2021, there were 71 ELAP applications received by the MHRA with 41 um, in, uh, innovation passport awarded. That is 85% over the application success. Seven innovation passports not awarded, which account for 15% over application success and 22 applications in process. This shows a great success of the scheme, actually. Uh, thank you.